So we've been working through the complex numbers topic. This is example 12 and 13. We're going to look at Dumoir's theorem. And Dumoir's theorem simply says that if we're raising a complex number in polar form to a particular power, we can do two things. We can raise the modulus to that power, but also what happens then is that we multiply the actual argument just by the actual value of the power. We don't raise it to the fourth power, but we multiply it in this case uh, by four. So we're looking at this complex number. The modulus is one. There's no number in front of it, so we don't need to think about that. But what we do need to think about is we want to multiply the argument by four. So if we get cos pi over six plus i sine pi over six to the power of four, we could say that that's the equivalent of cos. Uh, the cos of four times pi over six plus i sine four times pi over 6. And we just need to work out what that is. 4 pi over 6 is just 2 pi over 3. So we can simplify that to cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. And that is uh, Dumois theorem in its simplest form, where we're taking the power uh, and we're including it in either we're raising the modulus to that power and then we're multiplying the argument by four and simplifying the argument as much as we can. Okay, example 13, it takes us on to one where there is a modulus value greater than one. So given z is two times cos pi over three plus i sine pi over three, calculate z to the power five. So we could rewrite it as uh, two, what we want to do is two times cos pi over three plus i sine pi over three raised to the fifth power, which means that we take the modulus and we raise that to the fifth power. And then we're going to take our argument and we're going to multiply it by five. And you can write it in like that, or you can do it mentally. I mean, obviously, in this case here, five times pi over three is just five pi over three. You could write it in by inspection, but I'm just trying to um, make the point here, which means 2 to the power of 5. If you can evaluate it, then do so. If it's going to be a huge number, leave it in index form. The argument here becomes 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. And that is a complex number raised to the fifth power. We could play around with that argument. That's a third quadrant angle. So remember that we could make that into a, um, a negative angle by saying that 5 pi over 3 uh, is the same as that's, that's 1 pi. Um, and then we've got, which is 3 pi over 3, plus another 2 pi, if my mistake's actually a fourth quadrant angle. Um, in other words, it's the connected acute angle. It's just pi over 3 that way which means that we could represent the argument as negative pi over 3. So an alternative answer could be 32 times cos pi over 3 minus i sine pi over 3. But that's not essential. It's just to practice doing your arguments uh, in uh, a negative form as well. Okay, so that's examples 12 and 13. And we'll go on and use that in subsequent examples.